Hello, my name is Ian Clark and I'm a developer at Anubis. In this video we are going to show how to do a conversion between an Edifact D96A invoice and a UBL 2.1 invoice. And we're going to do some date conversion too. First we run DS, create a new mapping, and then we pick D Edifact D96A invoice for the source side. Here we have all of the Edifact messages predefined. And then we simply picked XML on the other side and press OK. When the mapping is created, we right click on the root of the XML tree and select Import, then Replace Element with XML Schema, and pick the UBL Invoice XSD. Note that the root element has changed colour to show that the XML tree has been generated from a schema. If we hover the mouse over the root, you can see which schema we are using right now. You can also replace a sub-element if you wish, allowing you to write custom wrappers for your XML data if you wish. Now you have a mapping that goes from Edifact to UBL. Next we run it with a test file. We go into Mapping Settings and set the test file in the debug arguments. Alternatively, we can set the test file in the project settings if you're using a project. Then we save the mapping and test run it. Once it's finished running, we can look at the source pane, switch to Parsed Document, and see how the Edifact mapping was parsed. Now we want to make an actual map. We take the BGM message and map it from the left to the ID on the UBL side. And next, we drag DTM on the left to due date on the right. Now if we run that, we'll see a very plain XML file. But we want a fancier date format, so we double click on the XML side and click the DTM box. Then we check the box saying use editor for extended mapping. In this area we're going to convert the date format, so we're going to use the EDIC function date format. EDIC has more than 450 functions, most of which were created to help with mappings. So we write target using alt t equals date format source using alt s comma yy mmdd to generate a date for the custom format. Now we press OK and run the mapping again. And we can see that the ID and date are using the new formula. Now we look at the source code pane. The code here is automatically regenerated when we change anything in the mapping. We can see a custom code further down. There we go. One more thing to mention. The UBL schemas are complex and get large very quickly. There are a lot of groups and we're not going to be interested in all of them. If we expanded them fully on the map tree, it would get ridiculously large very quickly. If we drill down, we can see that the XML element is coloured in green. That's a complex type or reference type in the schema. We can either leave that alone and the XML data for this element will not be written out, or if we want to map to or from lower elements, we can expand it by right-clicking and choose Expand Complex Type. We'll be covering XSD complex type elements and parse skip elements in greater depth in a future YouTube video. Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, just write them in comments below. If you want more info, go to www.inobis.se and look at our other videos here on YouTube.